On today's episode, we're going to talk about the upcoming U.S. elections. Tomorrow's election day in the U.S., and I don't know about you, but I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm Mari, science fiction and fantasy author who's been living in southern Germany since 2014. Today, we're going to talk about politics. More specifically, U.S. politics. More and more specifically, tomorrow's election day b between the current president, Cheeto Benito, um, sorry, sorry, Donald J. Trump versus former Vice President Joe Biden. As an American living in Germany, I have been asked a lot of the same questions over the last four years by my fellow Deutsche in regards to the current guy in the White House, how our election system works, and why so much discord between Americans. Honestly, it's been a very exhausting four years because I am practically the only American in my immediate vicinity and there are a lot of acquisitive Germans. And I have to repeat myself a lot. <laughs> So I thought I would at least touch on those questions and topics as we get ready for tomorrow. But I also have to state that I am only one American. I do not speak for the other 327.2 million living inside the states, as well as the over 9 million living outside the US. These are just my observations and what I have gleaned from friends and family who I can actually talk politics with. But before we get started, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell if you haven't already. Here on Adventures of Lamadi, we talk about writing, living abroad, and everything in between. First, I do want to talk about the discord between Americans. Um, it's, it's bad, guys. It's bad. And the biggest problem is that we were taught as children that both politics and religion are taboo subjects. And engaging in political debate is not considered polite conversation because these are considered private matters. Um, we Americans don't like to cause uncomfortable situations. Unfortunately, that has meant that we have two problems now. First being that after the 2016 election, Americans found themselves in a position where they have to talk about politics, but we don't necessarily know how to debate and thus have constructive conversations. And second, because up until this time, your political leanings were considered a personal decision and having a debate that ends up being based on emotion and not facts and logic, a lot of people take these debates as personal attacks. And I will admit, I mean, like there is a generational shift. Um, I wouldn't say it's just because of the 2016 election. And when I think about it, I think a lot of the younger generations are realizing that subjects that were considered taboo like mental health sexual orientation politics religion that we wanted to just kind of like put under the rug and ignored we realized we can't do that anymore we do need to be better outspoken and normalize these things so and yeah it's we are getting better about it um the problem is though people in terms of politics at least and a little bit with religion but mostly politics because it's kind of like what the the louder arguments are at the moment People are still taking any attack on their political party as 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 a personal attack as as well. It's 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 really bad, guys. It's it's not good. It's not. It's mm, mm. so this has this problem has over time snowballed, and of course, with the help of social media, people have been finding themselves in echo chambers surrounded by those who share their political beliefs. And also some discover those really horrendous rabbit holes that lead to those wild conspiracy theories. Like I said, we're starting, we're, we're trying to learn how to talk to each other in terms of politics. But a lot of times we just don't. We kind of allow the propaganda on social media or those very polarizing and sensational mainstream media to convince us that what the other side wants to the point where we don't even try talking to them to see if that's even true. <laughs> and I see this on both sides. And it's really frustrating. It really, really frustrating. So I come from the great state of Indiana. It is a well-known Republican leading state and where current Vice President Mike Pence was governor before he went to the White House. So uh, I do have a lot of Republican relatives. I also have a lot of Democratic rel uh, relatives. I live, I'm from Indianapolis, which is very much a mix. 
you know, as much as I talk about, oh, we Americans don't know how to debate. Of course, I have relatives who know how to debate. And it, and with those relatives, we actually have a much better relationship because we know how to talk to each other and try to understand, you know, that we are not just our identities are not connected to these political parties. You know, we're not just red and blue or whatever. We're, we're a weird shade of somewhere purple, I guess. <laughs> And like I said, we, we understand each other a lot better, even though we don't necessarily agree on on certain political things, you know? And and I say that because I, I, I do want to point out that, of course, there are some Americans that know how to debate. But I feel like that number is very small. <laughs> Again, my observation. Because what I see, especially on Facebook, I know way too many people on both sides of the spectrum who kind of just sit in their camps and they won't reach the other side. Um... Again, part of that is our inability to debate properly and also uh, not wanting to get involved in what can be a very toxic conversation. So it does, you know, come to a, a question of mental health and I'll, I will, I'll try to touch on that later. <laughs> now I want to compare that with living in Germany and I have to say that I am so grateful <laughs> that this country is well known for its debaters and philosophers. So discussing politics and religion is literally in their blood. And because of being in Germany, I have learned to be a better debater. Thank you, Deutschland. So of course, whenever I get all these questions from Germans about the US, it's never coming f you know, from a place of attack. I've never felt that. It is literally, it always comes from a place of pure curiosity. So we talk and we discuss and it's very lively. But I also, I must admit that it's, I think part of the reason why it's so easy for me is because at least the area that I live in in Germany is kind of like my own political echo chamber. <laughs> We're going to agree for the most part anyway. And like I said, that's like in my part of Germany. I'm sure there's other parts in Germany that probably won't agree with me. That's normal. Oh, by the way, did you guys see that Markus Lanz ZDF Heute episode with Tina Chitten from Republican Overseas? Oh. I mean, watching her try to debate was painful. And yes, that's how a lot of Americans debate on both sides. And it's not pretty. Oh, man. Like, yeah, I was definitely drinking watching that episode, guys. I, oh, God. And, but I think one of our biggest problems is actually the, the whole two-party system. Because we are, we are, we... We feel like we can only be one of two opinions. And I feel like that, I mean, that's kind of like a, an American thing overall. We're very extremist. We're very like, we love things and we hate things. We're red or we're blue. We're Republican. We're Democrat. We're pro-life. We're pro-choice. We're big government, small government. When in reality, we actually fall somewhere across a spectrum. So I say, I mean, U.S. politics in general both sides are very right-leaning compared to the rest of the world. So I don't want to say we're spectrum in between because I've actually, I took a test on my political leanings the other day and at the, I'm like way over here. <laughs> I don't fall anywhere near where the U.S. politics falls at the moment. I, I, I will admit, I think part of it is because of living in Germany. Yay! <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's... Uh, we are not one of two things and I, and I really I really dislike that because it all just depends on what the topic is. I think the US lacks something like the coalitions that you would find in German political parties. So for those of you who are unaware, um, there because there are several political parties in Germany uh, and the possibility of them give it, getting the more than 51% of the vote, it's possible but it doesn't always happen. So the political parties usually have to then work together, find a compromise, find, you know, like similar goals so that they get the, you know, the 51%, the majority, but also it forces them to work together. We don't, we have nothing in the U.S. that pushes us to compromise. It literally is this whole like party over country bullcrap. And I'm looking at you, Mitch McConnell, seriously. I think also we Americans were very prideful creatures. There are uh, quite a few of my compatriots who don't like to admit that they're wrong or that they have backed the wrong horse. There have been numerous times when I've argued politics with other Americans. I can see the little cracks, like the little hints that indicate that, you know, maybe on some level they have realized that maybe the candidate they voted for was in fact 
not a good one. But to admit that would mean they would have to admit that they were wrong. And we Americans hate being wrong. Again, overgeneralization, but you know what I mean? You see where I'm coming from with this argument? Like that's, that again, this is my observation. So in, in the end then, then when, when we kind of feel ourselves backed into a corner, then we'll double down. And that's where you get the whole like, what about isms? And then using whatever mental gymnastics necessary to convince ourselves that we have done the right thing and back the right candidate. Because if you've been in enough fights, like I have, you start to realize it's not about discussing ideas. It's about winning at all costs. Because if you can convince yourself that you have made the right decision, then it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I mean, well, a lot of Americans don't know how to debate properly. I mean, personally, I have allowed myself to get sucked into these conversations before, and they have been really bad for my mental health and has, has, has also seriously scarred my relationship with, with certain individuals back home, though most of them weren't really my friends to begin with, so that was really easy. But you know what I mean? Like, it, I, I've had to teach myself to kind of recognize these kinds of fights and situations and only engage when I know I'm going to have an actual adult conversation and not a pissing contest. And, and that's what I mean, where a lot of people just kind of, they... It, I, I don't think a lot of them really know how to recognize these situations. And so having that, because we don't normalize talking about politics, you know, you don't know, like, if you're going to talk to somebody, if you're going to have a genuinely good conversation, or it's just going to be a, a screaming contest. And of course, if it's going to be a screaming contest, oh, that's just, it, it's not good for anybody. It's not for, it's, it's super toxic and it's not good for you. So I think a lot of people are worried on some level that that's what's going to happen. So they just don't engage. And it's, it's a lot of this stuff has just not been to our benefit as a whole. So now I feel like I'm talking in circles. <laughs> I think at this point, you kind of get the idea how bad the discord is and kind of like why. So I'm going to get into like the two big questions I get from Germans. So the first question is, why did America vote for Trump? Okay, so that's a very loaded comment because I always have to correct them by saying technically America did not in fact, vote for Trump. First off, only 55% of Americans voted. And of that percent, he only won 46.1%. So that's like, like what, 23, 24%. <laughs> and he lost the popular vote by 3 million votes. He won, yes, but he won on a technicality. He won based on the electoral votes and not the popular vote. Then I get asked about the Electoral College <laughs> and why we still have such a, an undemocratic system. And mostly I say because, I mean, granted, the, the creation of Electoral College uh, is dubious to begin with. But in our 244 year history, we haven't necessarily complained because for the most part, the electoral votes and the popular votes were always the same. So we didn't see where it could go wrong. In 244 years, there have only been four elections where this was not the case. 1876, between Rutherford Hayes and Samuel Tilden. 1888, between Benjamin Harrison, from Indiana, and Grover Cleveland. 2000, between Bush Jr. and Al Gore. And 2016, between Trump and Clinton. The funny thing is, in that all four of these elections resulted in a Republican candidate losing the popular vote and still winning the presidency. I'll give you a guess which political party doesn't want to get rid of the electoral college. <laughs> anyway, I don't really want to go much deeper in that because at this point of filming, as well as the whole election campaign, my nerves are so frayed. <laughs> I honestly cannot imagine what it's like for the Americans back home. I mean, I find it stressful enough without all that political discord because I am all the way here in sunny, beautiful Germany. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it makes a huge difference for your mental health. We'll see what tomorrow brings. And in case you're wondering, I, I had voted early. I was a, I am able to vote. And uh, it turns out I had a lot of trouble. Um, a lot of Americans had trouble voting early. Um, the, the polls were so overwhelmed. And I'm not entirely sure what that means in terms of results. But my vote did count. So, you know, that's, that's important. <laughs> it will likely mean that my vote won't count because, yay, Electoral College. But... At the same time, it is my civic duty and my constitutional right to vote, and I intend to exercise it. So I know at this point, I haven't actually answered the question of why did those Americans vote for Trump? Well, guys, uh, for my German audiences, I have a fantastic video from Mr. Wissen to go 
that does a great and objective breakdown of the Trump administration that I will link. Uh, unfortunately, it is in German, so if you don't speak Deutsch, sorry. If you want something in English, just watch anything by John Oliver. <laughs> that guy always brings his receipts. Other than that, I guess we'll just see if America gets renewed for another season tomorrow. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up. It lets me and YouTube know you like content like this and you want to see more. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's a certain topic you would like to see on this channel. If you need some desperate escapism, my space fantasy of the God Queen is available in ebook, paperback, and hardback. I have all the links in the description below, as well as the first six chapters if you sign up for my newsletter. And don't forget to connect with me on social media, whether it is through Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And that's it. Until next time, Adi!